Chris, how's it going? All right. You well? You good? Yeah, all good, mate. Looking forward to this one. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it today. To be fair, of uh, make sure I've all got my old jobs done and, and ready to go. <laughs> good lad. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. To be fair, I think at this time we're just trying to do anything to keep ourselves occupied, aren't we? Uh, um, it's uh, it's it is funny time. So, but no, I made up that uh, that you've managed to join us, and you know, big thanks to everyone else who's tuning in. There's yeah, we're getting up to nearly well over thirty now. So uh, yeah, let's uh, we'll give give everyone a couple of minutes maybe just to see yeah. who else is going to join in. So I mean, you've done quite a few of these, haven't you, Chris? It's it's important to get the message out to as many people as possible. I think. Yeah, really enjoy it, and and obviously you know because we're not in a position where we're able to to do live events around the world, which is what we will be doing, and, and we would have been doing uh, due to lockdown. But yeah, I mean, this is a this is a chance for us to just kind of give. The viewers an opportunity to learn more about the academy in Liverpool, and and obviously you're you know a scouser yourself, so uh, you yeah. can uh, you can sell the city as, as much as anyone. Um, but yeah, just to give them an opportunity to learn more, and obviously mm -hmm. give them uh, a chance to kind of figure out if it's for them or not, or, or just kind of learning really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, fantastic. Well, I mean, listen, Chris, let, let's get started because I think everyone who's joining us, the, the numbers are, are getting quite high. So, um, I mean, to start off with, if you can just obviously introduce yourself um, and, you know, what it is that you do at the Stephen Gerrard Academy. Yeah, so, um, name's Chris Anderson. I'm uh, the international football lead at uh, Stephen Gerrard Academy. I'm also a semi-professional manager with AFC Liverpool, who play in the North West Counties uh, Division One North. Uh, and football has, has been my passion and love uh, since uh, a young kid. But it's a it's a dream to be actually working in it full time. And and obviously, uh, you know, I think everyone wants the opportunity to work in football, don't they? At some some capacity. So I'm uh, I'm very fortunate that I'm I'm in that position to do so. Fantastic. Because I know certainly a little bit, so you know that I've I know about you and, and from when we've spoken. You know, someone like yourself who's come through you know systems and now you you know you're coaching. You're also international lead at Stephen. I mean, that's incredible, Stephen Gerald's Academy. I mean, I think the the wealth of knowledge and experience that someone like yourself can pass on um, is is invaluable to to you know young students athletes. Yeah, you know, like I say, I'm not an old, I'm not an old dinosaur. I've uh, I've done a little bit in my uh, my 32 years of living on this planet. Um, so yeah, it's it, it's it's good because again, like I like enjoy, you know, I enjoy and I, and I love working with young people, uh, developing them, you know, on the pitch and off the pitch, and just to kind of set them up for for life, you know, moving forward and, and try and just guide them as best I possibly can. So. I use that through football and, and obviously other people use it for different methods. Uh, but my, my way is, is football and, you know, I've always coached younger players and, uh, and again, I'm now coaching adults. So it's good, the transition for, for developing young people, you know, toddlers all the way through, you know, when I was coaching camps in America and different things like that. And, uh, and obviously working with 16 to 25 year olds, you know, within the academy. And then also, obviously, semi-professionally working with adults who've got families and and uh, and working full time and stuff. So it's good. It's, it's obviously you've got to pick, uh, pick the pieces of, of when you're working with different people. But you know, I've, I've developed so much, uh, and I love the job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, it's nice, so easy that you've just said. Even then, you know, you yourself, you're developing as you're taking these jobs and you're dealing with you know the full range of the age groups, which I think is important for understanding how as as young, you know. Well, children grow into youngsters then through puberty and into adults you can offer them a full kind of the full gambit of 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 assistance and all those different aspects that's really cool i like that a lot yeah you know like i say it's important to to make sure that you, you're giving people solid advice mm -hmm. uh and I, you know I, I pride myself on and the academy does you know is giving solid honest advice to helping players develop and you know sometimes that is the arm on the shoulder and sometimes that is the, the home truths and and 
but we're here to, to benefit the players. We're here to develop the players. So, you know, it's never personal. It's, it's always about developing them uh, mm-hmm. and just making sure that they're ready for, for the big bad world whenever that comes, you know, because again, yeah. we all get into employments and jobs and, you know, bills and, and stuff like that. It's just trying to make people as prepared as possible, but again, through our, through our love of sport. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Okay, that's great, Chris. I mean, if we can move on to the actual sort of academy itself, um, give us sort of an idea of, I mean, how it works. What do you offer? Like a you know, basic outline of what's actually involved with SGA. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, we were the Stephen Gerrard Academy. We're able to offer academic and and football opportunities to male and female players from the ages of sixteen to twenty five. Now, obviously, a lot of our players at this moment in time, we have all, around about one hundred and fifty players that are age 16 to 21, 22. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're currently in like level three extended diplomas, qualifications that are going to allow them to go on to university, uh, maybe around the world in America or Canada or anywhere else that they would like to travel if that's what they want to do. And then obviously we have our international market, which basically players come from all over the world to, uh, I would say, the most passionate footballing city in the world, uh, to Liverpool, and to train and play and just to emerge themselves in in our culture and and uh, obviously learn so much about life and uh, develop their skills on and off the pitch academically as well. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, mm-hmm. the full package of, of of training players on a day to day basis, uh, hoping players go on to the professional level. Which you know, one of our strikers, Paul Mullen, uh, he was with the Stephen Gerrard Academy, Academy a few years ago, and he scored today for Cambridge in in and their top of the league too. So some of the players have gone on to play professionally and, and some of them are around the world. I mean, Jose is currently playing in, professionally in Portugal and, and he's got a game today. So I saw that on the Instagram. So it's good to, to obviously see those guys um, doing really, really well. Uh, but yeah, we're here to, like I say, support 16 to 25 year olds in academic and footballing abilities. Excellent. And it is obviously important to say that it is for both boys and girls, isn't it? It's for uh, it, everybody, which um, and a couple of couple of similar kind of academies that we know, they're mainly for boys. So I think it's fantastic that it is for girls as well. Um, and can you give us a little bit more of a breakdown on the actual sort of the, the, the courses, the qualifications that you offer there, Chris, as well? Yeah, so we do, uh, you know, like I said, level three extended diplomas and uh, that's in sport. So the, the students who are 16 to 19 will learn everything to within the sports industry. You know, we're hoping that if those students come here and they want to be coaches or they want to be sports physiotherapists, PE teachers, um, co- you know, analysts, whatever it may be, that they're going to learn the skills that are going to develop them and uh, move on to that career path if football doesn't work out. Uh, and again, even if even if football does work out, you know, at some point, these guys are going to retire, you know, and, and I would say I retired at, what, 29 uh, to get into management and stuff. So, you know, there's a lot of life after football anyway. So, again, educating those players to make sure that they're ready uh, to go on to whatever field they choose to do. And then we have our university programme, uh, which is, again, obviously a qualification that's a Bachelor's uh, of Arts or um of science depending on obviously what they would like to do um and again it can range from you know we have students right now who are currently international players who are on you know being doing doing law or doing business sports okay. science nutrition so there's a, a range of different opportunities and that partnership is with liverpool hope university uh, which is situated in the south uh, the south of liverpool in, a, in an unbelievable area um, and again, you know, the, the university is, is top of the range. You know, again, the facilities uh, have been developed over the last few years. They spent a lot of money on their sports facilities, sports facilities and things. So, um, again, they're coming into high, high end, you know, high performance, uh, high quality coaching and obviously education. You know, Liverpool Hope have been around for over 175 years educating people. So been around for a long time. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think what what Jimmy, you know, as you know, Jimmy, and for everyone who's watching, I think most of you know myself and Jimmy from Pro Soccer Global. What we've loved about sort of you know connecting with you guys at SGA is that's what we're all about as well. Is about you know educating children, uh, sort of helping them to try and see the 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 potential for for the football side of life, but you know really knocking it into them that you have to be prepared for when either football doesn't make out or life after football. And I think you guys, the way you've connected with like Liverpool Hope and stuff, that, that is incredible, you know. And, and I've seen the facilities that all these different universities have. Jimmy and I had sessions there and it, it's incredible. It really is. It's, it makes you, I think it makes it stand out so much. It really does. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, a lot of people that are around the world that are probably watching this right now, 
probably didn't know that this was a, an opportunity for them and that it was viable for them. Yeah. Uh, and it is open to international players. Uh, the, we do have some great players coming from different countries and they're developing every day. You know, again, not only from a footballing standpoint, but life experiences. And, and that's what it's about. Um, you know, we've all travelled. Uh, we've all lived away from home. We've all experienced different things, different cultures, different coaching styles, playing styles, loads of different things. So, you know, coming over here, uh, they're going to get that Liverpool culture. They're going to give that Liverpool education or English education that will stand them in good stead because the English education here is, is really, really strong. So wherever they go in the world after their education here, they're going to, they're going to, you know, they're, they're in a good starting point uh, to, to kick on with their careers. Excellent. And give us an idea, Chris, like some of the, where have you had students from? Where have you got students from now? You know, as far and wide as... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Made. Obviously, we've got a lot of domestic players, you know, again, out of the 150, there's a lot of domestic local players. We've even got players who've travelled from, you know, Bolton to Liverpool on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, to see that commitment from a young player who wants to develop, you know, to travel over an hour every single day uh, or two hours there and back every single day to, to come into our programme is, is, is great for, for someone, you know, because they could stay probably local at their normal high school or whatever. So that's a, a, a obviously a good one. Uh, for our international players, they're coming from the Cayman Islands, Kenya, India, Germany, yeah. Hungary. Uh, we've got an American player coming in in, in uh, about four days' time. Uh, so we're looking forward to him because he's going to do his master's degree. He's going to be doing his MBA here. Uh, yeah. He's played over in America. He graduated after four years and his eligibility had been all used up in America. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when you do go to America, you do get that four or five years to play. But then once you do graduate, you know, if you don't make it to the MLS, in, in theory, you could be retiring at the age of 22. So, you know, again, this is an option for people who want to do a master's programme and and, and, he, and uh, he's took that opportunity uh, and, and we're looking forward to him. So, yeah, players from all over the world and, it, and it's fantastic. You know, we've got some players coming from Sri Lanka in the next few, uh, next few weeks, hopefully, uh, when the lockdown's over. Um, looking to, to go as far as Qatar and, and, and Bahrain and, you know, Australia and, and everywhere. Be, uh, that, that's, you know, we want it to be open to everybody. We're inclusive. That's the, That's a good thing. Just kind of like where haven't you got interest from more than anything else, isn't it? <laughs> but that's yeah, it. that's it. Yeah, and I mean, I think you know, with, with with sort of, and I wanted to touch on on how much you know Stephen Gerrard is involved in it in in a little bit. But um, obviously, we've covered kind of the education side, which is amazing. Uh, it's very even. I didn't realise that such the wide range, and I know quite a bit about what you're doing. I mean, so then we get onto the actual soccer, the football side of things. You know, give us a little idea of maybe uh, you know the, the program, what a normal week would look like taking COVID out of it obviously yeah yeah um, you know again for our international players they get they get so much um, you know every day or well, not every day but you know maybe three or four times a week they're in the gym in the morning you know maybe 7.30 8 o'clock in the morning start so it's you know a little bit early starts um, get in the gym get a workout in uh, get back to, to the football campus you know maybe do like one-to-ones or small group sessions uh, and then obviously for the players who are in education that they'll you know go into education they'll have lunch and and when they come back in the afternoon uh, they may have another class or they may be done for the afternoon depending on obviously the, the programs that they're following uh, but then we'll have team training sessions of, a, of an afternoon and uh, they're getting obviously UEFA licensed coaching staff uh, the, the standard of coaching is, is very very high you know tu our tutors and coaches they've all been ex-professionals semi-professionals you know playing at the, the top of the game in, in that obviously area uh, so they're well equipped to developing young players and, and they've got the qualifications to obviously back that up and, and the experience in coaching players as well so we, we look at the four corners in, in terms of like the technical technical side the tactical side mental and physical mm -hmm. uh, and just make sure that we're developing players on, on all fronts and again like I say for the internationals they're training two to three times a day at times and and, and uh, we've got to kind of make sure that we're looking after them and, and um, you know, maybe we do a recovery session every so often, maybe we do yoga and, and you know, things like that so that we can we can obviously make sure that the, the no injuries and, and uh, that they're obviously playing to the highest levels and it's tough because a lot of these people are coming from all over the world that have never been into the intense environment like ours. Yeah. So they find it a little bit more difficult because they're not used to the, the sessions. And when we are playing the sessions, they're firing on all cylinders. Like the, the tempo is high. Yeah. Um, I would say that's a massive thing for English football. So mm -hmm. when they do come here, you know, maybe they're from Spain or maybe from, you know, wherever, uh, wherever around the world they are. 
maybe it's a little bit slower. It's, you know, maybe a little bit, maybe depending on where they're from, it might be a little bit more technical. Um, yeah. You know, but here it's very physical. So we expect our players to be fit and healthy. Uh, but from a, a, a technical standpoint, we need them to be strong. We need them to be technically good enough. And then tactically, I think we need the players to be tactically aware. Uh, and I think that's something that we really develop our players on. Mm -hmm. You know, we do match analysis with the guys. So, you know, when the game's been played, we, we, we have the, the huddle op opportunity for the players to go on, clip the highlights or, or our tutors will do that or the coaches will do that so that they can look at the performances. And, and it, we're trying to give it a no excuse environment. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not giving you any outs here. You know, we're, yeah. why are you not trying hard enough? You know, mm -hmm. it's either you, just because you're being lazy or, or whatever, but it, it isn't, you know... Oh, I, I was running. No, you wasn't. We saw. We could see that. Um, or whatever it is. And yeah. it's, it's, very, it's trying to make people accountable. Uh, mm -hmm. It's trying to make people that, you know, because we all know that the professional level and the semi-professional in England is really, really high and really strong. And uh, these players have got to be ready for it. So, you know, if we kind of just let them, you know, get away with certain things, then they're not going to be able to handle it if they was into a first-team dressing room with, with adults who, you know, have been experienced pros who, you know, pay the bills every month or whatever. So, uh that you know, we're, we're trying to make the, play, the players prepared for for whatever they move on to. But yeah, it's it's intense, and uh, you know, the lads love it. You know, the, especially the internationals now. They they're obviously they're not getting kind of face to face contact because of obviously lockdown. But we're keeping them busy on on Zoom sessions, and we're doing other things to develop their tactical awareness and uh, and communication skills and presentation skills and everything else. So it's it's been okay with COVID, but obviously we all want to be back on the grass and we all want to be back training and playing and, and uh, getting everyone involved. Yeah. No, I mean, it sounds incredible because, I mean, Jimmy and I have worked with, in what we do with, you know, professional players as well. And a lot of people who, who aren't in that environment, they do kind of say, well, you know, what's the differences? And, and, and it must be crazy intense and stuff like that. And to be fair, I think what you're offering people there is literally the full professional experience, which is, you know, it's, it's hard to come by. It is very hard to come by in a kind of a college kind of situation, I think. So it's it's incredible. Isn't it? Yeah, then, you know, like I said, uh, you know, these players are coming from all over the world and, you know, in theory, no one really knows who they are. So we're trying to give them a, a platform to to kind of get their name about and to show that they're good enough. And uh, and also for some people, it's to, to say, OK, you know, the level in England is really, really high and, and maybe I'm not at that level, but... I can then go and play somewhere else around Europe or I can go back home and I'm, I'm a better player now. Um, so we're here, like I said, to, to just give them options to, to develop them as much as we possibly can in the time frame that we have with them. And then, you know, it's down to them. Whatever happens after that is down to them. You know, if, they, uh, if they've if they got the ability to kick on, then, you know, we have the network, we have the, the contacts to help them get opportunities. Um, but if they're not, you know, that's... Uh, that, that's okay. You know, they've had an unbelievable life experience and, and maybe they gained the academic qualifications and they can go on to somewhere else. So, you know, you, obviously you've got a lot of experience in helping players in, in Europe and stuff. So you know the levels, you see the, the different standards and things. So, um, you know, it's just just the same here. Yeah, that's great. So, I mean, a kind of season, how does a season run? What kind of teams are there? Are both, you know, the, the, the boys teams and the girls teams. Who are they playing against leagues and stuff? Can you kind of go through that a little bit for us? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously my experience of, of playing in America, uh, you know, I did my scholarship over there. I wasn't, unfor you know, unfortunately, I wasn't good enough to be a professional footballer. Um, and, and, and the thing, you know, I loved America in terms of the travel and, and the experience, but the season was really, really short. And obviously, this is a massive thing in England where the season is 10 months long. Mm -hmm. So the players are playing all year round. You know, they're not just playing in a four month season in America or whatever. Um, so at least with them coming over to, to England, they're training and playing every day. And we will be playing in a, we, you know, we have a few leagues. We have eight teams in the academy. So again, depending on all levels, uh, we have the regional leagues so that the players will play obviously in the re in Liverpool region. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our national teams so that our players are playing in the, the football National Football Youth League mm -hmm. at the under-19 level. And we will be in the under-23 level uh, this season coming up. So, they will play against like shadow squads of Tramere, Carlisle, uh, Barnsley, Sheffield United, um, Crystal Palace, and, and you know those are in, those type of teams are in the league. So it's like the the shadow squads of those players. But again, you know the clubs are affiliated to them, so they get an opportunity to to obviously cast the net a little bit wider, mm -hmm. uh, see any late developers, uh, see players who uh, who are coming over here and. You know, maybe didn't make it at 18 as a professional, but, you know, maybe by the age of 22, 23, that they may be good enough. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's opportunities for them to go and play semi-professionally. And we have several um, 
several coaches and managers in 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 our organisation that are in the semi professional world now. So if players are good enough, they'll have obviously the opportunities. But yeah, they, they play in the national leagues and you know our under eight, under nineteen. Sorry, they play in the FA Youth Cup. Uh, which is obviously the best competition in England football for a, a youngster, yeah, uh, yeah. Which, is, which is fantastic. And, and obviously, uh, they did okay this year. They, they got through a couple of rounds and uh, and then unfortunately got knocked out. But, you know, that is an opportunity that they, they play in. So, yeah, it's a 10-month season, you know, playing at least one or two games a week. Uh, they've obviously got a lot of opportunity to train and recover and make sure that they're ready for the next game. And then, uh, yeah, it's it's like I said, it's it's competitive. And that's what the players want. They want to be stretched. They want to be challenged. Uh, and they want to, you know, they want to see. Okay, well, this is the level. I need to be at this level, or I, or I'm better than this level. I want to go to the next one, and the next one may be going playing semi pro. The next one's going in with a trial at a professional club. So, there will be exposure. Uh, they will have opportunities. They'll have highlight reels and all that kind of good stuff. But they will be playing in a competitive league over a ten month period. No, I think that's fantastic because I think a lot of people kind of seem to think if they're they're not signed by a club at like sixteen or eighteen, then they're kind of they're, and then maybe nineteen or twenty. I think their chance is gone. But evidently, you know, I, mean, I know it's not true, and you know it's not true. But so you you guys are able to sort of, you know, have students in there, and then once even if they graduate or if they get by somebody with your contacts, your network, you can actually then make that step up. That's what you're able to provide. I think that's yeah, yeah, different from what other people can offer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, the, the directors and, and the coaches, they've been in the game for a very, very long time, you know, and obviously with Stephen uh, involved, you know, obviously he knows everyone. So uh, that's a, that's an opportunity where, you know, again, Rangers is, is a perfect example. If players are really good enough, there is an opportunity straight there to, to go and, and obviously have an opportunity. Now, the players have to be at that level. We can't guarantee that players are going to, you know, you know, be going to professional football. You know, we have to be real about the the opportunities and mm. and and what's going on. But yeah, for sure, there's there, there is opportunities for them to develop. Uh, there is clubs, there is networks, and and you know, there's like I say, it's down to the players. Once once they're delivering, uh, it would be down to them to to obviously make sure they get a contract or not. But fantastic. And what and other programs that you offer, Chris? There's something is it internationally as well that you offer. There's other things that you offer as well. That's really interesting. Yeah, so we have the the pro experience, which is obviously the three and six month programs, and and that may be for a chance for players just to have a taste away uh, of living away from home. You know, maybe they're they're seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Maybe they've never lived away from home before, and they don't know if they can actually handle it for a year, or three years, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So there's an opportunity for players to come for three months. They will be living in a four star hotel uh, accommodation, um, which again they'll be living like a professional. You know, yeah. the chef will come in and cook the meals for them. Uh, there will be meet team meetings there. Again, the players from all over the world, and and we have several players now that are signed up, ready to go as soon as the borders open. They're uh, they're flying in, uh, but yeah, they'll be training like a pro. Two uh, two training sessions a day. There will be gym workouts, you know, match analysis, highlight reels. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there'll be stadium tours. There'll be excursions, opportunities to hopefully to go and watch Premier League football and kind of just really immerse themselves in. The Liverpool culture and the English culture of football, and like I said, that no better place to come than than Liverpool. So yeah, that's three and six months, and uh, players from all over the world, as long as they're able to come here uh, on the visas and as a visitor and things, there's yeah. an opportunity for them to come. Mm -hmm. So they're like three six month tasters, and then if the athlete decides they want to extend, they can just then continue on for the rest of that that, that period, a year, two years, three years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, like I said, that that's the thing. Like you know, for players, they may they may. You know, that, just want to dip the toe in the water and, and kind of get a feel for it. Once they're here, once they uh, once they know what it's about, uh, I'm sure they'll say, you know what, I want to stay and I want to get involved. And you know, if that's academically or, or what, then obviously you know we'll we'll go through that process. But yeah, like I said, it's a it's a chance for them to to kind of experience it. Hopefully, say they love it and uh, and they want to stay and uh, you know stay here for for a number of years. Then and. You know, that, the really positive thing, and, and I think it's important for, for people to know, is that um, the players who come here and do education, you know, once they graduate, they can actually live in the country for two years after they qualify, after they graduate with a master's or an undergraduate degree. Mm -hmm. So that's a fantastic opportunity for them to kick, you know, to kick start and to take their football even further, to take their careers even further, and to obviously keep living in here, uh, in the country, because... And I remember back when I was, uh, you know, finishing up with my degree and living in uh, Indiana. I moved to Indiana for six months, and my visa ran out. And it's really difficult to to, to stay there. And um, yeah. I think two years is a really good amount of time for them to showcase themselves on a football level, mm -hmm. showcase themselves, obviously, in an employment or a career level, professionally. Um, 
and you know again get an idea of if actually they want to stay here or not um but if they you know if they qualify and they want to go back home or they want to go somewhere else around the world then is that you know they have that opportunity to do so but that's great because i think a lot of people may think that with visas and stuff and especially after brexit it's a case of coming in and having to leave so being able to stay and continue the experience that's invaluable isn't it that, that yeah good to get interest from people yeah that's wonderful yeah, 100%. It's, it's one of those, like I said, I mean, they, they're able to try and, you know, kick on with the football and if that's where developing them to a level and they go, all right, well, you know, now you can just kind of really concentrate on, you know, you've done your academic qualifications, you, you've yeah. qualified, you've got a master's or you've got an undergraduate. Now it's about you kicking on with your football. Players have that opportunity to do so. So yeah. I, I think that's, I think that's immense. That's a motivator in itself, I think, the fact that they know they can play. No, that's, uh, that's fantastic. Okay, so I want to ask you now, I know, obviously with yourselves there and, and with, with, with Stephen Gerrard there, you must get some really good kind of guest speakers on Zoom calls and visiting the academy as well. I think everyone's probably interested to know, you know, what kind of people you've come through the doors there. I know I am. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's been great. And like I said, you know, we, we do at work, we do have a, a contact uh you know the the database is is phenomenal um and yeah the directors have, have got some great guests that have come on to speak uh to the players and uh you know like i said I, i've i've enjoyed every single one of them uh they've all kind of given you different stand uh, standpoints but they're all very similar in terms of the message it's about you know obviously working hard and 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 again they, they, they've they've been you know down to earth just normal people but they've, they're in high places and you know, we had uh, Peter Moore, the ex CEO of Liverpool. Uh, he came on and he spoke about his gaming career. You know, working for EA Sports and working for uh, Sega and and things like that. But obviously, then talked about you know um, Liverpool and when they won all everything that they could win. I mean, I'm an Everton fan and and uh, that exactly. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it. That's yeah. Sick. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, I sorry, mate. I, I, I was like, yes, love that. So, um, you know, like you can only admire though what he, what he did and what Klopp and everyone else has done at Liverpool. But he was there when they won the World Club Championships, when they won the Premier League, when they won the Champions League, and some of the stories he was talking about. You know, when obviously he played Barcelona, and obviously he sat there with the the Barcelona CEO, and you're just thinking, wow, like. How how are we speaking to someone like him? But that's because of the network that we have. And, and obviously we had Steven Gerrard came on. He, he spoke to the, to all our players and um, he was superb, you know, obviously talking about motivation, talking about the lockdown and, and how he's been treating, you know, having to treat the, the players and making sure that they're okay and, and checking in and just being, you know, active and, and getting out and having a routine and all those kind of good things for our students to listen to and hear, because again, you know, he's played at the top level. He's been the best midfielder in the world. He's yeah. he's England. You know, he's been an England international. He's captain both his you know country and and club. He's dragged Liverpool through to to win trophies and 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 you know everything that he's done. And obviously now he's doing a fantastic job at Rangers. Mm. Um, and you know again, he still still wants to help young people. Still wants to make make sure that they're okay. He still wants people to come to the city because of what. Liverpool is, um, and we had uh, Martin Tyler, uh, Sky Sports commentator. I think he's yeah. on. Uh, I, think, I think he's on the, tonight's game. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So like that was crazy. You know, he's seventy-five years age uh, of, of age, and uh, listening to him speak about you know when I don't know Man City won the mm -hmm. won won the league and Aguero scored, and and obviously he. His part in that, even though he says it's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> even even though it's uh, obviously not him, uh, you know, he he said I oh, had nothing to do with me, but just hearing him go, where are like I was like, oh wow, like, That's okay. uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we've had we've had some superb guests uh, guest speakers on, and, and they're only going to get bigger. Uh, you know, we've got some some really exciting guests on, and mm -hmm. and that's what our players get. They get those opportunities to learn from leading professional, you know, mm -hmm. professional people, mm -hmm. industry professionals who've been there and done it, you know, day in, day out, year in, year out. Um, you know, not many people get access to, to those type of people. And, and, and obviously we're able to do that. I think that's what, again, is what elevates it, you know, to that, that higher level. Uh, obviously, the foundation you've put in place. And everything that you're doing there is incredible. But to have that kind of in your locker, to be able to bring these incredible people on board, I mean, the kids must be just sat there like, you know, what's going on? And, and I mean, just to, to follow on from that, how involved is Stephen Gerrard in it? I mean, I know, I know he, he is involved, but sort of, can you give us a bit of information? How, what does he do? Yeah. Contact, what, what, what's the script there? 
Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, he's, he's very busy in Scotland. He's a very busy man. He's, uh, he, but he's always updated. He's always, uh, he's always in the know. Uh, they know what's going on uh, in regards uh, to the directors. He speaks to the directors a couple of times a week. You know, his his brother works for the academy as well, so he's getting inside knowledge every day uh, from his brother. Um, but but he, he's there. He's there. I mean, you know. He's been down several times previous to, to, to COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he wants to, he doesn't tell anyone. He just comes and, and watch training sessions and, and then for the players to just look over and see, you know, Steven Gerrard watching the training session is, is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, it's obviously never a big fuss. Um, but yeah, he's, he's involved. Um, obviously, he wants to be more involved and he's, he, he said that last week and that's the only down to, to COVID. You know, once COVID's gone and he's got a little bit of time because he does still live here in the, in the area uh, you know, when he comes back and, and has some time off uh, he'll obviously be down watching training coming having meetings uh, but it, he's involved you know heavily uh, he's just not here obviously on a day to day basis and yeah. at the end of the day we have to up, uphold to his standards you know because he's put his name to this he's involved really involved and um, obviously we need to, to make sure that you know again he came up with the, the motto "obsessed to be the best." Uh, he was the best. He was obsessed, and and he's been in. He's been involved for a very long time, from the outside. Uh, and obviously, over the last couple of years, he's he's kind of really got involved because he's like, yeah, now is the right time. I mean, when the director first spoke to him uh, many many moons ago, obviously he was the best player in the world at the time, and obviously didn't have the time to put in or yeah. the energy because he was that focused on, mm -hmm. you know, again taking Liverpool to the next level and playing for himself, uh, you know, and try and go and be the best player he could be. But obviously since then and uh, retirement's hit, obviously he's got a little bit more time in his hands and yet yeah, he now can focus on obviously Rangers, obviously, because they're, they're flying at the moment and he yeah. wants to take them to, to, to win loads of different things. And uh, But yeah, he's, he's really involved, uh, which, which is good. You know, it, it's, it's unbelievable, like for me, working for Steven Gerrard Academy to know that he's actually... Uh, interested he's actually involved mm -hmm. um and you know he, he you look up you look to you look up to him don't you you, you know you want to you don't want to you don't want to let him down um so you know obviously that message runs throughout the whole of the staff members and and uh, we just want to obviously give the players the best opportunity possible and the best experience i think i just think it's amazing that you know he, he put so much into it because i i'd imagine uh, from what I know, it's not. It's probably not a normal thing that kind of ex-players do get involved in their own sort of educational academy. And I think for him, he is still busy. He hasn't really taken a step back. He's, you know, one of the well, he's literally one of the best managers around at the minute. If you look at his record with Rangers, so for him to put so much into it and it not just be, oh, this is aiming. Yeah, I'll speak to you once every six months. He's heavily, heavily involved, isn't he? That that's incredible. Yeah, and you know, like sometimes you, you think, oh, you know, not obviously not with us, but with others, you might think, is it just a name? Are, are they paid? Have they paid for that? Um, so yeah, that's, that's yeah, what... yeah, and, and it's not like that at all, and that's uh, and 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 that's unbelievable, you know. Mm -hmm. to, I I was slightly surprised how much he really cared, and that's not being a, a, you know negative to, to Stephen. It's just I know how busy he is, and I know what he's doing, I know what his roles are. Um, but he does really have a passion to developing young people and giving them unbelievable experiences and giving them a really good start in life. You know, really? making sure that, like I said, that they're ready to go on to whatever they do. You know, because obviously, you know, we do have an age range and we do have a, yeah. obviously a capacity. So um, those players will move on to to whatever they move on to. But we really want to give them a positive start in life and and just like I say, then it's up to them. Brilliant. I mean, obviously, we've touched on lockdown there and. Stephen Gerrard not been able to come down because of lockdown. But obviously, this has been a testing time for all of us. But for you guys, you know, having those kind of students who are desperate to learn and desperate to be involved. And I mean, I've, I know it's been uh, Children's Mental Health Week this week as well, which certainly during the lockdown times, I think there's lots of people struggling. So how have, how have you, you know, yourself and the other staff at SG, SGA, how have you helped and kind of mitigate these things and, um, you know, motivate the players and stuff? What, what kind of things have you been doing? Yeah, well, we've, we've tried to keep them busy, um, you know, because, of, again, when when you've got loads of free time, your mind can wander in so many different places and that could be negative and positive. Um, so, you know, we're trying to kind of keep people busy. We're trying to get them, you know, obviously make sure that they're still doing the schoolwork, which they all are, which is which is unbelievable. Um, and also just to make sure that they're, uh, they're occupied, you know, outside of the classroom too. So, you know, we did a, a no screens day on Wednesday. Uh, so basically put the laptop away, get out for a walk, get out for a run, 
uh, exercise, get out and, um, and just get away from the laptop because, you know, again, you know, as, as youngsters, and I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm bad for it too, um, that we're on our phones all the time. Oh, yeah. Non-stop. And, you know, social media, it can be a really bad place at times and you're always kind of comparing yourself to someone else or whatever. So, you know, we really believe in mental health and make sure that we're, our players are looked after and we're always doing check-ins, you know, especially for me, I do obviously deal with the international, so I'm checking in with the players on a regular basis just to make sure that they're okay. How, how's the family? What's mm-hmm. going on? Um, and just kind of, you know, making sure that they're they're okay and that they're ready. And um, obviously, when the opportunity comes back, because obviously some of them are at home still, you know, in Hungary and Germany and things like that, and they're not in the environment that they were in, which was up with us day yeah. in day out in an uh, in an a pro experience level. Um, so obviously, for them, we just need to make sure that they're all right. And you know, we're doing loads of different things. You know, Zoom sessions in terms of fitness. You know, getting out in a Strava on a Strava run or a Strava walk. You know, make sure that you you're being accountable still making sure that you're putting your um, your reports in or, or your results in from your runs and things. Obviously, yeah. assignments have still got to be done for the academic players. And, and um, yeah, it's, just, it's been really good. But this week was obviously a mental health week and we had one of our students, George, uh, if you go on, on to our uh, social media, he uh, he tried to give uh, our, our students some tips uh, to, to think about the mental health because he's had a couple of issues himself as, as, right. as a youngster and... He's been very open. We got him on Wednesday afternoon to speak to our international players and it was a real eye-opener. Like, we got upset. We got emotional because mm-hmm. of the things that he'd gone through. Um, and obviously that's down to George to, to talk about. But for him to to kind of open up to as many people as he did was mm-hmm. inspirational. Um, but now he's got the mechanisms and, and the things in place to uh, to get over that and overcome it. And when he feels that things are going to go on, that he had those tips and and the tips are on the on our social media to for anyone who wants to have a little look to say okay well this is coming from a student of your age you know it's not coming from me it's not coming from a a teacher it's coming from another student mm-hmm. who's kind of gone through that that process and uh, he's they're the things that he believes that work for him and that will hopefully work for other people. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, it's relatable, isn't it? If it's someone your own age, as I mean you're not as old as I am, but you're older than what the the guys and girls are there, so it is. I think it's always great to hear that from someone their own age. That's it. No, that's fantastic. Um, I just want to say, Chris, and I'll, I'll quickly answer this. A lady called Kate dropped a message to us. Maybe she missed a little bit about the international students. She's down in Essex, and she was asking if the you know the courses were open for people from outside the Liverpool area. So yes, Kate, if you're still watching, you know we we, we spoke with Chris earlier that they, you know international students from all around the world are coming to HGA, um, and probably I think we can just start to maybe tie things up a little bit. Um, you mentioned social media there. You know, I think the way your social media is run is really professional it looks really really great really fresh anybody who's watching this for more information how can we all find out more information about the details chris what what's the script on that yeah so obviously social media at this moment in time is big in terms of you know being able to to promote your stuff and, and be able to promote youngsters and players and of, of our academy and make sure that obviously they're doing what they need to be doing but yeah steven gerrard academy uh, steven gerrard dot academy uh, in all uh, for Instagram and um, for Twitter and Facebook. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, we have stephengerrardacademy.com uh, for our website and all the information that they can have uh, will, you know, through our social media. Even again, even if you've got a couple of questions, just send them through to, to that DM. Uh, DM us on, on social media. I or the team will get back to them mm-hmm. uh, to answer any questions at all. And you know, obviously, just going back, we do have players from England who are on our programme as well. Uh, we have uh, a player coming from Stanford. Um, who's, who's been with us? He's the one who's doing law, which is unbelievable. Uh, we have a player from Northern Ireland uh, who's uh, who's from Belfast, and he's with us as well. So players from all over the world um, is it, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, amazing. It's just yeah, I just love it. bringing all the different cultures and different people together. It's what it's what Jimmy and I love doing with our pro global tours. You know, we have groups from all around the world coming over, and everyone mixes in. And I think it's what it's what life's all about, isn't it? It's all just life experience. Yeah, yeah. I just saw one of the comments there. I hope you're well, David. Uh, but Solomon is, uh, Solomon is coming over from Arizona. Uh, he will be coming in the spring. So it's uh, it's great to, 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 to obviously get him involved. And we look forward to uh, to him uh, arriving when, when the time's right. But yeah, that was just a, a little comment that I saw on there. So uh, is that, there's a little shout out to David. Is that, is that Mr. Moss from Liverpool, is it? Yeah, I, yeah, I've, I've met David before. You, hi, David. I'm gonna have to catch up with you at some point soon. Um, but no, and you know, it's lovely when people drop comments in. Um, 
So, Chris, I think really that's pretty much it. I can't thank you enough for coming on. Um, if anybody has any questions, as Chris said, please, please, everyone follow the Stephen Gerrard Academy on across all the social media networks. You know, we've we've invited Chris to come on because Jimmy and I from Pro Soccer Global, we, we know you guys well now. We're delighted to be kind of looking to cooperate on a couple of things with you. And I mean, it's the Stephen Gerrard Academy in Liverpool, the greatest city in the world. I mean, who does not want to be part of that? Come on, you know, it's, it speaks for itself really, doesn't it? That's it, mate. That's it. I mean, like I said, I'm not. Even, I'm not even a scouser myself. I'm. A, I've been in. The, I've been in the city. Adopted. You adopted. Scouser. Yeah, I am. A, I, I would say I'm adopted scouser. Yeah, I've, I think I've done quite well uh, in the four years that I've been here. I've, I've obviously I got myself working for, for one of the best players in the world. So that's that's a good thing. And uh, yeah, I, I I love Liverpool. And like I say, it's been fantastic for me to come here uh, and just to experience everything. And and uh, the football culture here is is mad. And uh, anyone who's going to come here. He's going to have a really good time and, uh, and, a, and a fantastic opportunity. So fantastic. thank you for having me, Chris. It's been appreciate appreciate it. Uh, it's been been good. No and hopefully we'll do more throughout the future anyway. Excellent. Chris Anderson from the Stephen Jarrett Academy, thank you so much for joining us. And everybody who's tuned in, ask questions. We really appreciate you taking the time to uh, to watch this live call. Take care, Chris, and me and Jimmy will catch up with you soon. All the best, mate. Good stuff. Cheers, mate. See you soon. Thanks, See you, everybody. guys. Bye-bye.